invite you now to join me for a moment of prayer. Most gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for calling us to arrive and to come to this place, to gather as this community of faith. And we give you thanks for your presence that is always here with us. God, we ask that you would open us to that presence. Open our eyes and our ears, open our hearts and our minds, that we might be filled with your love, so that as we interact with one another, as we go out into this world and live in relationship with all of your creation, we might share that love, giving thanks for all of these blessings. We pray this in Jesus' name. This text in Isaiah paints a pretty great picture, I think, right? On this mountain. Mountains are, are thought to be places where, where you're closer to God, right? In this whole, it's a holy place. It's a, it's a thin space where God is, is closer to us. We feel the presence a little more acutely. We're a little more aware of that. And maybe you have been out uh, to, to the Rocky Mountains or, or, or to any great mountains for that matter. You, you kind of get what I'm talking about. You feel something different. You feel the presence of the divine on this mountain close to God. All will be fed. Not, not the, the meal that they're, they're talking about here isn't triscuits, some cheese, isn't it, is it, is it just what we have in, in refreshment time, right? It's more than that. It's, it's, it's these rich foods. These foods that fill us. It's kind of like what you might think you'd have on Thanksgiving, which is, is coming up at the end of the month, right? You don't, you don't just make uh, pizza for Thanksgiving, right? You have something, something big, something rich something filling and you might also have a glass of wine or something with it you have something good to drink something good to eat this banquet is going to take place on this mountain Isaiah proclaims where all will be Welcome. And as if, if that were not enough, Isaiah says, on this mountain, the Lord our God will lift the shroud, will lift that, that pressure, that, that heaviness, that weight that has been upon us. God will make it so that death is no more. Death is no more. And God shall wipe away the tears from our, our eyes. We will have no more reason to mourn. For all will be fed, all will be filled, all will be living in the presence of our amazing God. Isaiah is is preaching, proclaiming, prophesying. In a time of, of great unrest, they're not quite sure, scholars, when this particular text was written, but the whole book of Isaiah, Israel and Judah are not doing very well. There's a lot of war going on. There is oppression. There is um, an occupation that's going on. And then there is exile. These people are not having a very good time of it. So when Isaiah says, on this mountain, the Lord our God will make it so we all have something good to eat, something to drink. The Lord our God will take away death and will wipe away our tears. 
in a world that seems so bleak, so dark, so full of violence. This is a ray of light. This vision is a beacon of hope. And it offers us that same hope today. We're not in the same place as those hearers back, way back in, in maybe 8th century BCE. We aren't experiencing the same kind of oppression or, or war here in this place. But there is not a single one of us in here that hasn't experienced loss. That hasn't lost a loved one. Whether that be through death or through broken relationship. There's not a single one of us here who hasn't had our hopes dashed at some point in time. Maybe, maybe a job you were really hoping to get didn't come through. Maybe a, a, a dream we had for our future has been quashed. We have all experienced some kind of loss. We've had reason to mourn, reason to grieve. God will wipe away those tears. God will take away death. Death will be no more. And all will gather at that heavenly feast. These are words of hope to us even this day. But I think they do more than that. Yet they have they have to fill us with hope. Well, they don't have to. I suppose you could just turn and say, no, nah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. These are these are words from from our, our God who has, has been here with us, who has cared for us, who has comforted us in all of those difficult times. In those times of despair, in those times of hopelessness and helplessness, God has been there, and God will continue to be there. These words of hope are words of inspiration. This day we celebrate all saints. And if you looked in your bulletin insert, the church word for today is saints. Who are the saints? What are the saints? Well, according to uh, Catholicism, there, there are, I think, three things that you need to do in order to be considered a saint. My understanding of saints isn't quite as narrow as that. My understanding of a saint is one who seeks to live out of God's love, who seeks to proclaim the good news of God's love for all people, for all creation. One who strives for justice and peace, which is not just the lack or absence of war, but is that feast all are taken care of. That's When we receive hope from this vision, we have, have that, the potential to be inspired, to become saints. Saints are those who are working for that vision. They trust with all that they are, even though sometimes, okay, we may have our doubts. They trust with all that they are, that that vision of God's care for all people. It says all people. All nations. Not just some. Not just the chosen few. Not just these who are good enough. But it says all. All will be at this feast. All will have that 
that shroud lifted from them. All will have their tears wiped away. When I hear those words, I am inspired. And I think of all of those saints who have gone before us and those who live among us this day, who hold that vision before them. They can see it. We can see it. We trust that, yes, yes, this is, this is the way the world is supposed to be, and the way the world can be, and the way the world will be. God doesn't work by ourselves. God invites us to work with him. God calls us to work together and with the divine to bring this vision to reality, to bring this, this world to actuality, to really live in that, to, to work for a world. We all have something good to eat. We all have something clean and nourishing to drink. To work for a world where people don't die from prevent preventable causes. They don't die from a gunshot wound or from a bomb going off. They don't die because they haven't had access to proper health care. This calls us, God calls us, to comfort one another, to wipe away one another's tears, to embrace one another in love, God doesn't act alone. That's not the God that we know. But God is God, a God of relationship. I've always worked with people. God's working with Isaiah right here. God doesn't just go and do this. God works with Isaiah and says, prophesy to my people. Friends, this is a vision of hope. This is a vision of peace a vision of love, a vision of life and well-being. This is a vision of inspiration that, that calls us to follow in the way of Jesus, to follow in the way of the prophets, to follow in the way of our beloved ones who loved us so dear who worked for justice, who worked for peace. This vision invites us to, to, to be saints, to be a community of saints. Those who work together and with this world around us and with our God. So that this vision will become real. This vision will be made real right here, in this time, in this place, that all of God's beloved might be fed, might be filled, might be comforted, might be cared for. Let this vision fill your minds. Let this vision fill your minds. Hearts, that we might dare to walk that saintly path, that we might dare to follow Jesus' way, God's way of love, of peace, of justice.